Well, this school year, I am determined to have smoother mornings, that I want to get our day started on the right foot, not with me screaming at the kids to get in the car because we're running late. And so we're gonna make over our drop zone today, which is, you know, it's your mudroom, it's your closet, it's where all of the kids drop all of their stuff at the end of the day, so that every morning we know where everything is. I'll show you our drop zone coming up next and a few tips for success. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from TheMinimalMom.com and we just love sharing about our family's minimalist lifestyle, but more importantly, sharing tips and ideas of how you can achieve it quickly because most often that's what I hear is, I just don't have time to simplify. And so I understand it can be kind of a chicken and an egg thing. I don't have time to simplify, but if I simplified, I'd probably have more time, right? And so I love sharing tips and ideas for that. So be sure to subscribe if you wanna see uh, more ideas in the future. But today we're talking about drop zones. And I don't know if this is a term that everyone's familiar with now. I actually don't really like the name because it sounds messy and I'm trying really hard to keep my house organized and clean. But basically what we're talking about is wherever your kids and your family, all of you, drop all of your stuff at the end of the day. So backpacks, coats, boots, hats, mittens, all of that kind of stuff. And so I've seen this, it's become common on Pinterest and I look through all of these beautiful mud rooms and drop zones and you know, all these cool cubbies with hooks and child's first initial on everything. And I just, I look at some of these and I'm like, well, if my house looked like that, then of course every morning would go smoothly because it's so beautiful, right? But we all know that it doesn't actually work that way. And so our house, you know, it was built in the 1940s and my mud room does not look anything like any of these pictures. But here's what we need to do is we need to just work with what we have. I actually need to be really grateful because we have a very large front hall closet and we have a space for a bench with a shoe rack on it and it's pretty spacious and so I am grateful for that. So we just have to look at the space that we have and decide how we can best use it. So here's what our closet looked like up until just a month or so ago. The problem was when we moved in, I never really got any kind of system in place with it. And so it's full of stuff, but really most of the stuff actually belongs there. Most of it is coats and hats and boots and mittens and all of that. The problem was it was July and we still had all of our winter stuff in there. So that was my fault. But the other thing was the shelf on top is like the perfect type for Tom to put everything on. So as we've been doing remodeling projects and updating, he just likes to stick everything there and so as I was looking through it I'm like oh my goodness like it felt a little bit like a clown car of like how does all of this stuff fit in here so tip number one when you're setting up this space in your house would be to clear it out of absolutely everything that you don't use on a daily basis so for example here's my husband's hunting coat but he literally uses it one time a year so no it doesn't need to be in our closet for all of the time obviously winter coats and boots when they're out of season they just needed to get put down in the basement and they never made it there because we had a really long winter and I wasn't actually convinced that it was over yet but no they could have been put away but go through and just pull out everything that doesn't belong in there because we need to have space for our daily stuff and we don't want stuff crammed in there. We want it, you know, we want space. We want it to function well and not feel like we have to push stuff in and then slam the door shut behind it. And so we really wanna just get down to the stuff we use every day. Even some of our coats that are like maybe a dressier coat or just for really cold weather, those I moved to our closet in our bedroom because again, if we're not using it every day, I can walk all the way to our bedroom to get a coat. You know, like we can't be silly here. And so I know a lot of times we put off projects like this because we think it's gonna take a lot of time. This took me one dedicated hour to get totally cleaned out. And here's a tip for when you're tackling a project like this. When I pulled stuff out, as soon as I had enough to like either bring to the garage or the basement or a bedroom, I would take it directly there because there's nothing worse than getting everything pulled out and your closet looks great and then you look the other way and you're like oh my goodness but my dining room's a disaster and that feels overwhelming so deal with the stuff as you go and have a donation bin handy right there's going to be stuff in there that we just don't need anymore and you know if if it doesn't belong in the closet we don't really have a good place for it elsewhere in the house 
we probably don't need it. So let's get the donation bin going as well. Okay, so step number two. Now that we have it cleared out, we need to make sure that everything has a place. And so coats need to have a place to go, mittens and hats if you live in that kind of climate, boots and shoes and anything else that you use on a daily basis. It needs to have a place to go. So here you can see we have a bin for the boys' hats and mittens. We have a bin for the girls' hats and mittens. And then up here, these are for extra shoes. And so the girls have a bin that they put extra shoes in. And then for the boys, I also put their dress shoes in there so that they don't wear them outside to play or anything like that. And then up here, we have bins for baseball hats, um, stuff that needs to be returned to other people. These obviously are just bins from the dollar store. It doesn't look beautiful like, you know, on the Pinterest boards, but it was economical. And I've also learned that when I clear off a shelf like this, if someone in my family, like my husband, does have a tendency to fill it back up as soon as they see it empty, I do like putting bins like this up there to help deter from that. And we've definitely found that hooks work way better than a rod. So if you have a closet rod in there right now and you have to put coats on hangers, that just doesn't happen, right? It just takes too long, especially for little kids. So you can just go ahead, either take out the rod or leave it in and just put hooks behind it as well. And then we also have our shoe bench. This is from Ikea. We've had it for five years. It has held up incredibly well. I would buy this bench over and over again. Easily accommodates two pairs of shoes for each of the kids. That's what they're allowed to have out at any given time. Usually I have a pair of flip flops on there too but it works really well. I like that there's no cubbies to clean out, that dirt just falls through to the bottom so it's easy to clean up and sweep underneath. And then also make sure that you have a spot for backpacks. So we added these hooks because we never actually had a dedicated spot for backpacks. So I installed these hooks myself. Thank you very much, Tom. There are anchors behind them, so they're not gonna fall off the wall after a week of being used. The other thing we do, and I'm gonna cover this in our, our morning routine video, but at the end of the day, the kids dump, like literally dump out their backpacks. So they take out their lunch boxes, homework, and then I make sure they pull out anything else that doesn't need to be in there for the next day. So actually at the end of the day, when they hang them up, their backpacks are really light. So I'm not very worried about the hooks coming off the wall. Okay, and then the last tip would just be we need to have a system for keeping everything in order. And so with our kids, we um, we do zones. And so each child, well, usually while I'm cooking dinner or before bedtime at some point during the evening, they have a zone that they clean up. So for our five-year-old, the entryway is his zone and he does a great job of organizing all the shoes. If you better believe if somebody has an extra pair of shoes on the shoe bench, he is gonna let them know and then they have to decide which shoes are staying out, which ones are going back up into the basket and so just have a system whether it's the kids which is a great job for them or yourself that once in a while you go through the closet you make sure again that everything in there is stuff that's supposed to be in there I don't like it's just incredible to me how things like gets like we had curtain rods in there we had the extra leaves to our dining room table like it's like it's just stuff that did not have to be in there. So it would be nice if we could do this once and it would just stay that way, but we all know that that's not how it works. And so have some kind of system where you just go through it occasionally to make sure that it's all the right stuff. All right, so it's back to school time right now for us, but when, I don't know when you're watching this, but I would say any time of year, it's worthwhile if you feel like your closet or drop zone or whatever you want to call it has gotten a little bit out of control, take an hour. You would be amazed at how much you could get done. So coming up next, we're going to talk about how to make school mornings go a little bit smoother, as well as planning your fall calendar and how many activities should our kids be in. Let's talk about that too. So you'll find links to those videos down below. And then once we get through this back to school series, we're going to pick up with our toys series and talk about how we organize art supplies and how much do we keep and bathtub toys. So there's more videos coming on that as well. So be sure to subscribe. And as always, the best compliment you can give us is a thumbs up.